Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. What does a father of three kids, father of five, father of two, have to say about what's going on in the world today? Find out in three, two, kick it! You don't, you don't want to know something funny? Uh, uh. The name of our song, intro music. Yeah. Black Mamba. That's correct. The name of the album that it's on, Man in the Arena. thought that was pretty interesting. Very good. We, we knew what was going on before we knew what was going on. So we didn't know what was going there on. There is something to this podcast. We just hadn't figured it out yet. That's right. We're, maybe, we're, maybe you'll figure it out for us. We're so close. Eventually, it's going <laughs> to... It's going to connect. Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. I'm your host, Chet Sears. As with me, with me as always. Thank you. Goodness gracious. Every time I listen to this podcast and as with me always. We're, we're just, uh, we're getting there. We're just, we just, we're so close. <laughs> Chet finally made hey, a connection. Hey. Maybe this is where. <laughs> Settle down. This with is where me takes, as, as always, always is Troy Trussell. And unfortunately here. with me tonight, today this is evening. Matt Amos. Good grief. It's going to be an interesting episode because Matt is apparently uh, trying to get me on tilt. 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 And uh, we're going to hear what's on Troy's mind. We're going to have our top three life hacks slash tips. Which uh, we've done before, right? So this is No, no. We got like best advice given to us. I don't think it was this. I think we've done hacks. I don't know. Well, they'll be different, I'm sure. It'll, no, they're different because, I mean, you, you continually learn. These are what I've learned since. Whatever. Why don't you learn how to go back through Be our show one. notes and find out if we've done this before? <laughs> I probably should. And Matt's going to close this out with a good word. He's going to have to change his attitude before the end of this Shit podcast. We get there. It. Hey, uh, you've been working on a blog for our podcast, right? No, it's on our website. We go back uh, all the episodes with show notes, and you can listen to the episode from there. Yeah. Hardheadedpodcast.com. Yeah. So if anybody wanted to go search for a certain thing in an episode, they it's could easy go to, to find, the website. It's easy to find for the first uh, year and a half. Yeah. So there yeah. you go, Matt. If you ever want to go back I'm and plug look. it into the website. Yeah. There you go, man. All right, Troy, what's on your mind? Here we go, boys. All right. So this movie, I want to talk about this movie that's apparently it caused an uproar uh, when it came out. I had no idea. Because my wife just said, oh, that looks like a fun, interesting... That's how they get you. ...thriller or whatever. Not knowing what's going on in the world and just, oh, that looks fun. That's right. So it's called uh, Leave the World Behind. I think we... Have we mentioned it on the show before? Yeah, you brought yeah. it up. Yeah. So... Then you didn't know it was produced by the Obamas. The Obamas. No, right. I didn't. So I, I did a little, little research on this. Boo this man. Good. And I told... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Boo Obama. Well, the the premise behind the movie. I mean, there. Well, let's get into it because I think I it was your research. Me telling you about it. No, I went and did some more because you. I piqued your interest with the you whole piqued, racial undertones. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I went and rewatched the movie as well. But so have you seen the movie? Yes. Okay. I have not. I haven't seen it. Okay. So, so there's a. It was based on a 2020 novel of the same name. Uh, leave the world behind. It's a sci-fi adaptation. Uh, it's directed by the guy who created Mr. Robot, uh, Sam Esmail. And that's a TV series that has uh, the guy that was uh, me, uh, the guy that played Bohemian Rhapsody guy. Yeah, uh, he played. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fred, Freddie, Mer Freddie Mercury. Fred Mercury. Yeah, he's in. He's in some good stuff. Yeah, he is. Uh, Mr. Robot. Mm -hmm. Three episodes in, I had to leave it. Okay. Some. There's a scene in there. Don't it? it I know? got I got one episode in. Well, I got three. And in. I just wasn't interested. I, I was very interested. I thought the first two episodes were fantastic. I think maybe it was the second episode. There was a there was a like there was a gay porn scene basically. So I oh had, gosh, I had to bail out really fast. Um. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, Sam Esmail, I think is how you say his name. He he. Uh, directed this movie. He made a few changes from the novel. So if you're familiar with the novel, the plot remains pretty much the same. Uh, it's basically two families 
have to come together and rely on each other for survival. So, yeah. um, and it happens. It's the movie's kind of, and I'm probably going to give some spoilers if you hadn't seen it, but we do that all the time here on the hard headed podcast. Cause we just don't care. Yeah. And it's been out for like a year or two. Yeah. How long? Well, has I, been I don't out? think it's been out a year, but it's oh, been okay. out a long time. Yeah. A while. If you haven't seen it now, then tough luck. Yeah. It's like, you can't spoil a movie. that's like out on VHS Remember back in the day. Right. Oh, Once yeah. it comes out of you, you're, it's free, it's fair game. And now if it's digital, you got like a weekend. And then, <laughs> yeah, then you're done. Then you're done. Yeah, forget about it. So well, as you're watching the movie, I couldn't figure out if it was like going to be apocalyptic, if it's going to be zombies or or what's happening. And, and throughout the movie, you're trying to figure out what's going on, kind of like the people in the movie are trying yeah. to figure out what's going now, on. What happened? They just like lost power? So it starts and Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke, they're married. They have two kids. They decide to get away for the weekend and she planned this trip to go to this really nice Airbnb to just get away, get out of the city yeah, and get away from it all for a little bit because she hates people. She figures that out. Oh, okay. It, it's pretty, it's pretty funny first scene. Uh, so then and they, Matt was tracking right along with that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they go, get to this house and they have a first day uh, that's the enjoyable. Normal, normal vacation. Yeah, day. kids are playing in the pool and everything and whatnot. And then at night, the doorbell rings, and it's the other two people, which is not a full family. It's just a man and his daughter, and they happen to be African-American. I don't think so, Troy. No. Hey, interject any, 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 any time. So they're sitting on the beach in the ship. Oh, that's right. The so whole that, ship that was, scene. That yes. was the initial, like, something. That's the initial something's going wrong. Yeah. The ship ran aground. Yeah. And they're on the beach. Yeah. Pretty cool scene. So they have that to. That was pretty neat. They have to run because the ship just keeps coming, coming, and coming. And then they run back to the house and they're trying to figure out what's going on. And then that night. And then that night, that's when the doorbell rings. Okay. Uh, so the doorbell rings and the, they come in and there's this confrontation with. Because it's like a stranger at the door. Yeah. Like, what are you doing here? But it ends up, you know, they admit, like, this is our house and we don't know what's what's going on. We just came here cause this is the first place that we thought to come to Yeah, uh, where it would be safe. And so then the movie starts like that's, the, that's the confrontation. When the, that, that's when uh, the play on current racial tensions uh, kicks off because you get the feeling that, uh, that the uh, Julia Roberts and her husband, I can't even remember her name in the movie. I can't uh, either, but it, it's, it's not overt. You know, they don't come out and say it, but the undertones are it's because this black family comes up to this nice house and then these white people don't believe him. And then at some what I read, the article I read said that the the black family was like, you can't trust white people. Yeah. Yeah. Never trust whitey. But I never got that. The first time you watched it. The, I didn't get it the second time I watched it. Oh, oh okay. I got the whole thing the whole time. Yeah. So you're desensitized. I must be, but I, I didn't get I, I picked up on... I mean, uh, I saw... I can see. I mean, I see that there's a black family, a white family, but yeah. I just didn't... Feel the tension. I didn't feel the tension in... Now, I felt the tension on... There's a one scene where the the man who owns the house is hitting... I mean, basically, they have like... that. He's not really hitting on her, but he is. And he and Julia Roberts' character have a little bit too much to drink, and there's this weird element of emotions going on yeah. while they're playing some records and stuff. And her husband is uh, with the kids or he, he's just not with them, but they're all in the same house. Right now I felt some, some weirdness there Yeah, with what was going on. Uh, but as far as the whole racial stuff, I just I honestly didn't pick up on it. Okay. And I didn't feel it being portrayed as that. Oh, I did. 100%. Like it was like it was the articles that you brought up in the media. Mm -hmm. That's dang near what turned me off to even watch it, finishing the thing was just, and I didn't, I didn't know at the time the Obamas produced it. Yeah. But I, I, now I get why that was in there so heavily, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's weird that you didn't pick on that, pick up on that being as into like film and, and production and all that kind of stuff and telling stories with how you, you do. It's weird. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I just, 
I try not to see that maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe Matt's just more of a skeptic than you. Maybe so. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, but it was just like, why, when they, when they came up and the dudes like, well, this is my house. And they, they made it like to where she was talking. It's like, well, there, you know, there's no way uh, you could afford this house. And it was wording kind of like, she didn't think that they made the type of money that this would be his house. And it was a judgment based on their color, not on, uh, you know, not the, on them as people. I'm like, why? Who in, who, who in this world says that? Right. You know, in this day and age, I mean, I don't, I don't get that. That would not be a conversation that would happen. You yeah. know, like, Oh, Oh, you're the wrong color to, to own this house. Typically the people that would say that also can't afford that house as a, a Airbnb. <laughs> But I don't know if she, like, I didn't even really hear any racial slurs like no, no, that. No, there was no slurs. It was all undertones. It was basically, but, well, you can't afford this. And then it was, uh, they wanted you to infer it was because of their color. Yeah. Like, I, uh, it, maybe I read into it too much. I mean, I could see much that, I, but from what I got from. You were focused on the prepping part of it and like, what's going to happen next? Well, do we ever find out what happened? Yeah, you do. at the very, Well, you don't find out, but it's. The apocalypse? It is, but they they never it's, find it's out. It's a certain type of apocalypse. They never find out how. It's, it's like a virus yeah. or an electrical thing, or basically, you just basically lose. Uh, uh, Does everybody well, die? Let's call it like an EMP. You know, yeah, yeah. so all of your electronics are just shocked. So I'm still waiting for the movie to come out one second after. I'm waiting for that movie. They're not gonna make that. That movie would be awesome. That movie would send the world into a panic. It'd be the War of the Worlds Part Two? No, it's. This is like legit. What movie is that? It's not. It's a movie. not a movie. It's it's a book. One, second one, after. one second after. Uh, Don't you, read it. Have y'all both read it? I've got two copies. <laughs> I'll let you borrow one. <laughs> I've got two now. No. Why are uh, they not going to make it a movie? It's too real. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's it's like, dude. It's there's a lot of people that read that book that go that that book is spot on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right. I mean, from a societal breakdown, everything, like, yeah, I it 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 shook me. But I I thought the so I thought one of the cool parts of that movie was you know one that you didn't think about was all of the uh, like the Teslas and all the cars that are hooked <laughs> yeah, up. That to, was a cool scene, you know. So all the Teslas, not technically Teslas, but whatever car, all the electric cars, all yeah. the electric cars of a certain company that looked the same, all went home to their place of production. And so like the, they were all just lined up on they, the highway, on the highway, they were just zooming in and crashing into each other, trying to go to the home, you know, and not stopping and with people in it. No, I didn't see no. any people. in the No, cars. there weren't any people in there, but there was seen Ethan Hawks like got to get out. They got to get away so they don't get crashed, which is pretty cool. But yeah, as far as all the racial undertones, I didn't pick up on it. I did pick up on the fact that, she was really scared to letting these letting this guy in this house. Letting this black guy in her house. Yeah. Then so. all the, did they prove that like he was actually the homeowner? There was pictures and stuff. I th I think that they he, he had a key to the the very first thing he had a key to the liquor cabinet. She was like, well, he could be the servant or the, the See, help. Again, See? again See? he could be uh, the yeah. help. And and I get yeah. that, but I don't know. I just I just didn't read into it like that. I did. Well, maybe, maybe I'm just more cynic, cynical. So why'd yeah. you watch it again? Just to see about the racial undertones or did you get some prepping advice? Um, I mean, there's no prepping adv advice in it. It just, the movie's like, if this goes down, you need to be ready. So it kind of, that's what kind of started Hannah and I talking about, man, if this stuff happened, we're dead in a month. Yeah. <laughs> like, so so we started right you know making a list and starting to so i will tell you that what's going to happen if you read one second after <laughs> <laughs> let's hear what what's you are not prepared i don't care what you've done right you yeah. are not prepared i'm not prepared like i it, it, it is if could you imagine um not having enough places to bury people 
Yeah. Like, oh, is this the book you said that like golf courses? Yep. Yep. Yeah. You gotta start. I'm gonna start burying people on golf courses because it was easier to hand dig there. And your medication, like you know, you're off of it. But what if you? What if you're on it? Like, what if you've got? Uh, how many? You know how many people are in psych meds out there right now? Oh, gone. No, no access. No production. No place to get it. No doctors. I mean, all all the people on heart meds dead. Like it, it's just, dude. That's not even talking about like people with ill intent. Which no police force, no oh, government, yeah. no. I mean, it's a no wild game after a, f- a few months because all the rednecks go out and just shoot all the deer and they're all dead. I mean, it, it's like, yeah, that's probably what's all going to happen. There's no, whatever plan you think you've got, you just, I don't think it's going to, if it goes all the way. And that was just an EMP, like uh, that every, every electronic device in the U.S., basically. Um, is that what the disaster is? Yeah. In that book? It was an attack. Yeah. That's what it is one second after the EMP. Yeah. The name of- mm. Yep. But, I mean, and it's all, you know, I mean, as good as that book is, I mean, they're, they're, it's, yeah, they're, I, I, there, there'd be a collapse and there would be a lot of that stuff, but I think a lot of those services, you, you'd find those, those, those people that would, wrangle a society start providing services and have access and trading and bartering becomes well that's what they were doing that's what they did but and they they had the reservoir and they were trading water uh, to a town down the mountain with with their resources but they were going to get an army built up and come and conquer this town so they can have access to the water without having to barter i'm telling you dude Right. I mean, you're going back to the to third world, you know, ancient, yeah. you know. But but you're doing it from a people group that has never dealt with that kind of mental. Right, I, I get it. Well, there's going to be a lot of dead for sure. Oh yeah. Y- you know, I mean, but are uh, nobody's going to go out? I mean, they're the whole wild game and shooting all the deer. That's I don't buy that because there's what 300 million people in America and there's probably 30 million deer in Kansas. 30 million deer in Kansas. Or 30 million deer. You know, I mean, there, there's... Yeah, there's not that many in Kansas, folks. No, I mean... <laughs> yeah, don't come here don't looking come for 30 here million here deer, looking for deer. Not, hunters. Not in Kansas, but... Yeah. Like, <laughs> Stay away. Nationwide, I think there's more There's no. more deer than you think. And I'm then telling there's, there's you. There's more wild game and... It, it ain't, ain't going to happen. Plus fish. It's and, not like you're going, oh, I'm going to go out for a walkabout and walk to Montana and shoot a deer and come back. It, it's, it's where you're walking. Yeah. You're going to wipe out all the game around every population center. And then you're going to have well, to go further out and further out. And then you're going to be gone for days. And then how are you going to preserve all well, that meat coming you, back? You talk about population center, but those people got to get out to you. You know, I mean, so it's. Yeah. Okay. Mr. It's not going to be that bad. I'm not saying it's not going to be bad. It's going to be, <laughs> I mean, I have electronic legs. so It's not going to be preferable for sure. Hey, you have an electronic leg. Yeah, <laughs> don't oversell it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Although, if the MP, uh, you know, does happen, I hope it just fries it completely and it just goes into free swing. Then I could just save time instead of peg legging for about a day, because that's really going to wear me out in my process. If of it's free anything. swinging, no. If it's locked, locked. Yeah. So I hope it just kills it and it just goes into free swing, because then I'll walk normal. Yeah. Okay. What are the effects of an EMP on the human body? Nothing. Nothing. No. Because I want to. It's a wave thing, right? Electromagnetic pulse. It's just a pulse that goes of out. electromagnetism. Okay. So it interferes with electronic devices, circuit boards, processing chips, like the computer chip that manages your fuel injection on your car. Like, so it doesn't do anything to the human body, like they're saying cell phones does to your. If you hold it by your head long periods of time over a year, five years, you'll get a tumor or something. I don't think so. And it's not necessarily. So the way that you get one, like from an attack perspective, is using a nuclear device, but you set it off in space. Right. Over a certain area. area. Yeah. 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 So if they set it, shot it over Kansas, it would wipe out all of North America or just the U.S.? Depends on how big the 
blast is. I'm Who not. Is? I'm not an expert here, but it, it depends. Oppenheimer, come on, man. We need. Nope. No, I haven't seen that one either. Yeah, we need an expert on electromagnetic pulses. There, there's some to theories come on the that, podcast. That would be kind of fun. There's some theories that um, it's not going to get everything. But. No, I don't. It, it it couldn't, you know, and I don't think. It, uh, there are some theories that even some of these uh, modern cars uh, wouldn't be affected as much, um, you know, and then there's... Yeah, but that doesn't matter to you because you're gas. You're not going to have any gas. Well, how do you know that? I mean... Oh, Quick Trip's going to be back up online? All the semis <laughs> are going to work? The refinery's going to keep pumping? No, but those that do are going to be the next uh, Bill Gates and whatever. Dude, no, those that do is going to turn into Dennis Hopper, and they're going to be going around in a cruise tanker ship <laughs> with their jet ski pirates dennis hopper yeah the the movie water world oh troy got it yeah i've seen it once yeah kevin Surprise. yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's what's been on my mind that's that's a lot of fun it, i'm glad we're not going as deep as we could go there why not i could ask i could ask troy exactly what is it because he said he had a list he didn't say he's completed anything on the list and then we get into well, what have I done, which I'm not telling anybody. Um. Oh yeah, I don't think we should go get into all that. Okay. I think you know I, I would say just do your research and uh, do what you think is going to be right for your family. I mean, you know, if that's something that interests you, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do, but. There's plenty of literature. There's, there's resources out there. YouTube crazy stuff. videos, stuff out there that you can figure out. And it's all basic. I mean, it all goes back to basic necessities and yep. how to achieve those basic necessities. And then how do you, how do you do that? And when you figure out food, water, shelter, those three things are your necessities. How do you gain those when you have nothing? Yep. You got to have something. All right. Well, good. Thank you, Troy. You bet. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and talk about our top three life hacks. At Admiral's Pennant, our mission is to offer the latest and refined high-quality masculine products and services to the modern gentleman, as well as provide him with the tools and products necessary to look, act, and feel confident in his appearance and social interactions. Check it out at admiralspennant.com. Without it, you might as well shave. All right, what now? <laughs> top three life hacks you're going <laughs> Oh, first. top three life hacks. Uh, number three. The Warthog V Sharp A4 knife sharpener. I've been Warthog. Yes, I've been. You know, we've all got these. Uh, you know, your little stone or or uh, whatever you're using to sharpen your knife. And what is this? is this one of those things that has the bar and you go? Nope. Nope. No, this one is just on its own little stand. And you just do this. Yeah, but it's got uh, it's got springs that hold the tension on yeah. the uh, on the stones as you're as you're sliding the knife through. They're stones and, it, and not bars. They're bars. Okay, but they work so much better than yeah. anything I've ever used. A warthog knife sharpener. How much does that cost? About hundred bucks. Ninety four ninety nine on Amazon. So I got it. I can't remember. Uh, I got a rock. So. Uh, Ron bought this for me as a gift. Yeah. And I use that thing all, it's so quick. I've got it in the kitchen. Butcher knife needs sharpened. Yeah. Good to go. And it gets it so much sharper than any of the other. Uh, How many times you got to run it through there? I'd do three. That's it? Yeah. It's it's quick. It works really, really well. I'm super impressed. I didn't think I would be super impressed by it. Yeah. Okay. So this is a life hack device. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, but in furring, have a sharp knife. Oh, heck yeah. Use one every day. Yeah, life hack number two, because uh, these don't relate to prepping, Troy. Uh, life hack number Mine two. Mine don't either, I promise. All right. <laughs> Is the, uh, the eight-minute method to perfect rice and how to prevent your rice from boiling over? Do tell eight minutes. I'm Eight sorry. minutes. So, how, how do you cook rice? The perfect way to cook rice is number one, if you've got two cups of rice, you're going to do four cups of water. So, you double well, the Yeah. Okay. To prevent it from boiling over, instead, it's take one of those cups of water, toss it out, add yourself a cup of uh, chicken broth. 
that will your rice will mm. not boil over with chicken broth. I have done this before. It tastes better with chicken broth. It does, but it also prevents the water from boiling over. Yeah. So the eight minute method, you let that water boil down uh, till it's level with the top of the rice, cover it, turn the heat on low, let it simmer for eight minutes, take it off the heat, turn off the heat, let it sit covered for eight minutes. Rice is done. That would be 16 minutes. Perfect rice. No, it's a lot more than 16 minutes because the then you got to wait till boiling you boil the water off. The eight minute method. So it's eight minutes, eight minutes, and then however long it takes you to boil it until it comes down. <laughs> I, how about I just do it my way? The 36 minute. It's 20 uh, minutes. <laughs> it's roughly about 20 minutes. But if you just remember eight. Do you always do the one to two ratio? Yes. Oh, I it don't. comes out perfect every time. I've never had an issue. And I and I wash the rice too. I know a lot of people don't, but I. Uh, it depends on how much time I have. But I yeah, it. I prefer washed rice, for sure. Because then it doesn't stick right as much. And then uh, number one, and I just learned this recently. And I've been in construction. I've been a framer. I've done resident residential construction for three years. Yeah. Your tape measure. Mm-hmm. On the tape measure has a width. It's written on the tape measure. It says this tape measure half inch. is three, most of them are half inch. No, the actual tape measure. So the whole body, and it'll say three and a half inches. Oh, okay. So you can just go butt high. up against a wall. So if I'm measuring, you don't have to bend it. You don't have to bend it. You just set it on there, and you need to measure, yeah. it and then you add three, whatever, three and a half inches to it. I did not know that until it's that. common. It's common sense, right? It's like you look at it like, duh. Yeah. But Always I did, I did, bend it. I didn't. I, yeah, I was like, I always, I always go up and bend it. Like, no, just sit on the floor and shimmy up. But most of my tape measures are round on that end. So is it at the base of that, or at the where the apex of the? It, it's a. It should be at the base if it's written on. Well, on, then you can't do it up against a wall because then you're hitting the. What are you talking about? Look, man, here, I'll sketch it out on your paper. Most tape because the coil is round. The it, it's flat across the top, and then it does this. And then it does that. So here versus here. Yeah, it's where it's going to sit when you're measuring. Yeah. So it's going to. I'll, I'll have to try it. I almost grabbed. Well, and, and if, we'll if, if it, it doesn't, uh, yours may not have. It may not be a good construction tape measure. Stanley, you got you got someone against Stanley tools. Stanley Craftsman. Tools. Craftsman's good stuff. I've got Craftsman. Stanley's the owns Craftsman brand now. By the way, do they? Pretty sure. Are you okay? Yeah, because Sears went under. Yeah. Not this Sears. <laughs> they, all, <laughs> they all have. All right, I'll uh, I'll go. <laughs> Don't go into an establishment that doesn't have windows after dark. Life tip. So, typically, that's a bar, casino, a pool hall, a casino. There's nothing good that happens in those places. Jehovah's Witnesses, <laughs> places of worship. They don't have windows. They don't have windows. There's no need to go into a building that was built intentionally without windows. Or if they came in later and like covered all the windows up, yeah, like a bar would move into a place. You just don't go in there. Life tip: Don't do it. Nothing good's going to happen in there. I like it's it. It's not worth it. Number two: Don't trust a woman. If you could see all of her iris in the eyeball. <laughs> You've talked about this one before. Yeah. <laughs> That's a life tip hack right there. Oh my God. I apologize, women listening, but those first two right there were given to me by my dad, and they have proven true time and time again. Yes. That's, that's a... Crazy eyes. And then uh, I'm telling you, number <laughs> number one... Put your energy in things that will last. Don't don't put your energy in temporary things. It's good. My advice, life hack, life tip. I like it. All right, Troy. Uh, number three, tape templates. You're going to have to explain that. You can stretch out, like if you need to hang something, stretch out a piece of tape over each hole Make a mark on the holes that you got to, on the thing that you're hanging. And okay. Then put the, level the piece of tape on the wall, stick it to the wall, and then drill your holes, and it's perfect. 
I'm, I'm still not tracking you here. If you're going to hang something on a wall, like a picture or something. Yeah. You got two holes on each side of the frame. That's a big picture. I do everything I can only to have one hole. Well. And I use the cable on the back of the picture because then you could adjust it to make it level. Well, if, you, if you're hanging something larger. Like a TV. It, it could work on a TV. Yeah. They usually, those usually come with templates. Okay. But if you don't have a template, you just stretch a piece of tape across. Like masking tape? Painter's tape, masking tape, something yeah. like that. Tape it on the picture on the back side. Mark your holes on the actual frame. Oh, okay. On the object that you're going to place on I the wall. I get you. Now I get it. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Mark your holes, then stretch that on the wall. Drill, drill your holes. Hang it. Because you can use your level for the tape. Yep. Because it's blind behind the picture because they're never yeah. at the top. I learned this about seven years ago. It changed my life. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you must be hanging a lot of pictures. Yeah. Right? We've moved a lot. That's true. Yeah. That's true. We've moved a lot. Number two, put a wooden spoon across a boiling wood. pot across of water. Across the child's backside wood. when they don't put back. <laughs> That's another good use for it. Wooden spoon over a pot of water. Both of you had boiling water boiling over top life hacks. Yep. The wooden spoon will keep it from boiling it over. It will not. Yeah, it does. It does. It doesn't for rice. Well, because you have a lid on rice. All right, number one, if you drink too much beer, you get drunk. Switch to seltzer water. Oh. Now, this is obviously beer drinkers across the world are not just going to switch to seltzer water overnight. I did it. It took a long time. But for me, seltzer water gives me the same sensations my body craves as a beer did. Okay. Which is the... Holding it, cracking it, taking that first sip. Coke, of a Coke. Bubbly carbonation. But Coke's full of sugar. You go yeah. from alcohol to a bunch of sugar. Coke zero. No, not the same. If I'm going to drink Coke, I'm going to drink a Coke. Do, do you drink salsa water in place of chewing Copenhagen? Nope. No? Well, but, no. Huh? Of course he doesn't because it's not the same thing. Well, I would be like, do you, get, do you buy the beef jerky stuff? But you're, you're just trying to say like seltzer is like beer, but it's not. Is well, it's it? not the same thing, but it gives you the same sensations. Drinking anything that's bubbly. A Coke would work. A Sprite. But you can't drink like six Cokes in a sitting. You can drink six seltzer waters or six beers. You, are you saying I can't drink six Cokes? Well, I bet you can. But that that reminds Sounds me of like a story. Sounds like a challenge. So one time in college, my, my buddy Trip, Trip, if you're listening, what's happening? He, uh, we were having a, playing a drinking game. And uh, card game, I don't remember which one, but he came over, wanted to hang out, and he didn't want to just sit there. He wanted to play, so he brought a twelve pack of Dr. Peppers. Yeah, <laughs> and he got about six or seven DPS in, and we were all drinking beer, and he hit the bathroom puking before any of us did. No way. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. did, man. Watch out for the Dr. Peppers. You can't, you can't drink that many that fast. Yeah, 23, like you can beer. 23 ingredients a bunch of times <laughs> That's over. That's right. <laughs> 23 times 7. All right. Oh, man. That's funny. I hope you found some value in this cooking episode of <laughs> Tips. Hey, it cha it's changed lives. I mean, I've cooked so much more rice since I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> like, because I don't have to worry about it boiling over, and then I got a mess to clean up and shoot. It, it, and it does taste better with chicken broth, but I just never put, yeah. I'd never put two and two together that why does my rice boil over sometimes and sometimes sometimes it doesn't? And then all of a sudden it was, oh. I put a half a stick of butter in mine too every time. When you boil it? Mm hmm. I, I do that after it's done when it's steaming. I'll put the, I'll put the butter in it. What are you cooking your rice for? Like, I, I wouldn't want that in my jambalaya or in my uh, gumbo or my etouffee. No. Like butter rice. I, I love rice and I'll eat rice with salt, pepper, and butter. But, you know, if I'm cooking a big pot of rice, it's going to go in a dish. Well, yeah, I mean, if I do chicken and rice or something like that, I'll, that's what yeah. I'll do. But, yeah, I, I just do white rice because your flavor's in the gumbo or the right, whatever. Right. Yeah. I don't yeah. butter mine for gumbo either. But, no, butter. I, I like I like. I did the, uh, I did the potato salad the other day. Oh, in the new gumbo. recipe? No, in the gumbo. Oh, in the gumbo. You know about this? No, what is this? The people in Louisiana are doing it. 
they instead of rice, they're using potato salad. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Did you know about this? Is it is it already prepped and ready to eat potato salad? Yeah. Yeah. That's so strange. I know. That's like a cinnamon roll and chili. No. Yeah, it is. No. No. I don't believe it is. <laughs> it's just a weird potato salad's not like a dessert. Oh, true, but some potato salad's sweet. I don't know. That's weird, man. It I, is. I mean, I would not. I would not try it. I'm just telling you. I tried. It. I'm not like. Ooh, I'm never going back to rice. You did try it though. Oh yeah. Did yeah. you make your own potato salad? No, or no, no. You just bought. Dude, some? it's hard to beat some of these store bought potato salads. The devil's de- uh, deviled eggs potato yeah. salad. Have you ever had that? Is that the one at Dylan's? Well, they have them at Dylan's. They have them at, at Walmart. They have it everywhere. I don't know. I, I'm not big on potato salad. What's wrong with you? I mean, I like it. It's just I'm picky. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. The de- the deviled yeah. egg potato salad. Really- there's some you buy. No, the whiter it is, uh, I like the well. The deviled egg ones are white mostly, but they've got some dill and some other stuff in there. It's really good. Otherwise, I want that mustard. Give me some. Yeah, that's what I yeah, like. Yellow potato salad. Anyway, next time you make gumbo, you just buy a little dish of that and give it a try. And I might. I wasn't a huge fan because, you know, rice is not adding flavor, and this added flavor, which threw me off a little bit. But Yeah. We've done it with cauliflower rice just to save on calories. Cauliflower yeah. rice? Yeah. What in the world is that? Okay. It's cauliflower. I've, I've never heard of... of what? It, it's ground up cauliflower. That's all it is. They call it cauliflower rice. How do you make... Uh, is is it, you, boil, you put water in it and boil it, and you eat it like rice. Well, you don't even it have does to not do that. S- all all you have to sell. do is like heat it up, really. Nuke it. I'm not a fan, but you've never heard of say, it? I, I was going to say, I'm not, it doesn't sound not, rice, not good. I will say rice tastes 100 times better. So why would you need cauliflower instead of rice? Because it's carb-free. Yeah. Oh, carb-free. Yeah. Watching your weight, something like that. How is it carb, car, cauliflower is carb-free? It's a vegetable. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't mean it has no carbs. It's carb-free. For people that go no carbs, gluten free, they eat rice is gluten free. Rice is gluten free. Is rice gluten free? Yeah. Learn yep. something every day, folks. All right. On that note, <laughs> Matt, the good word is learn. Proverbs four thirteen. Always remember what you've been taught and don't let go of it. Keep all that you have learned. It is important. It is the most important thing in life. Very good. Yeah. So. In, in, in my case, I, those are two things that were taught to me when I was younger. The so, windows and, and the wide uh, eyes. The wide eyes. I thought of you this weekend, matter of fact, uh, and that exact comment right there uh, that you made, because I think you made it about a month ago, um, if I'm not mistaken. The crazy uh, eyes comment? The crazy eyes. Yeah. Because you, you heard about the earthquake up in uh, what like the yeah, New, New Jersey, York, New, New York Jersey. area. And I'm in Kansas City. This weekend, and, and my favorite station to watch when I'm up there because, you know, it you just have your basic cable. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no Amazon Prime or whatever at the hotel, you know, the Holiday Inn Express where I normally stay. And uh, we just really like this hotel. It, it's so my favorite station there is uh, my uh, – or local – it's a local sports network, so they always broadcast high school track, mm-hmm. football, soccer, whatever it is. Well, they had the news on, and they were interviewing this lady. You could tell they chose this interview because she was the craziest one possible. <laughs> and she had her little dog in her arms, you know, and her, her eyes are just this big. And 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 my bed was shaking, and this and this and that. And I'm like, oh, she's nuts. Like, I would not yeah. want to spend any time with that lady whatsoever. And it's because her eyes, were the whites of her eyes were like just all of it. Yep. And, and like, the color part was so small. And I was like. He's crazy. Yeah. Like, where did they find her for this interview? <laughs> they're they're back there. Like, who should we interview? Who should we interview? That one. That one right there yeah. with the crazy eyes. Get her up here. All right. We'll learn Proverbs 413. Thank you, Matt, for that good word. Appreciate you joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.